Hey guys, I'm really excited for today's video because we are going to be wear testing all of the makeup that I purchased in the Sephora sale. So here it is, it arrived yesterday and I'm really excited to share what I got. Thanks to all of your comments on my Sephora loves list declutter video, I was able to really narrow down my cart and I'm really excited for all the things that I ended up getting. So first things first, I redeemed some points for this 500 point perk. This is a brand I haven't tried before, this is the Isle of Paradise Ultimate Glow Kit. I've been thinking I might want to get back into self-tanning this summer, and I felt like this would be a good way to just dip my toe in the water. So this came with their self-tanning drops for face and body, which I think is cool. You can use it on both the face and body, and you, I guess you just mix this in with your moisturizer. I feel like this bottle is, like, only two-thirds of the way full. Did it leak or I don't I don't think it leaked. Yeah, very tiny bottle, but you know what? That's okay. And then it also came with little minis of their body polish and body moisturizer. Was that worth 500 points? I don't know, but <laughs> that's what I got. So on to the actual products that I purchased. Um, I got the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer. This is one of the things I was like pretty positive I was going to get. And I ended up getting the shade N2. Thank you to those of you who told me to go with N2 because I was almost gonna get N3, and a few of you told me the shades run kind of deep, so N2 looks perfect. Like, this looks like a perfect shade match for me. Also got the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Setting Powder. I ended up getting the shade Pound Cake. A few of you guys told me that this would probably be the best shade for me. I think this will be more of like a translucent skin tone match. I was also looking at the peach shade, but I was worried it might be a little too deep, so I decided to play it safe and go with Pound Cake, and I did get the mini of this. I also decided to try the Glossier Cloud Paint Bronzer. I was between this and the blush, but I decided to go with the bronzer because I'm just a little bit more interested in the bronzer. This is in the shade Sail, which is the lightest shade. It's like so much smaller than I expected. It's so tiny, but this looks like a great neutral bronzer tone for me. Also, I allowed myself to buy one blush. There were a few blushes I was interested in, but I decided to just pick one and I ended up going with the Say Dew Blush. This is their Liquid Cheek Flush in the shade Rosy, which looks like my favorite type of blush shade. This is like a rosy peach. Ooh, okay, nice uh, doe foot applicator. That's cool. Mm, interesting smell. All right, not gonna get too carried away. I just wanted to show you what I got first as like a preview, and then we're gonna try everything on. My curiosity got the better of me. I did decide to pick up the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. I did get the mini of this, um, which is actually still a pretty sizable size. This is a one ounce, 1.1 fluid ounce bottle. I'm really curious. This doesn't contain isopropyl alcohol, so I'm really hoping it won't be drying to my skin. It does contain phenethyl al alcohol as the last ingredient. I'm not sure if that is a drying alcohol or a fatty alcohol. I'll have to look into that, but it is the last ingredient, so hopefully it won't be a huge deal if it is a drying alcohol. And then I did also get the Danessa Myricks Color Fix, but I ended up getting a different shade than what I was considering at first. At first I was going to get like a shimmery duochrome shade, but I decided to go with one of the nude shades because I think the thing that's really cool about this product is that it's meant to be used for any purpose. So you can use it as an eyeshadow, a cheek product, a lip product. And so I felt like I would just get more use out of a nude shade that I could use as both an eyeshadow and maybe a bronzer. So I ended up getting the shade Nude 4, which looks like the kind of color that I would totally wear as an eyeshadow. Oh yeah, this is just a really pretty soft beige color, but this also looks like a good bronzer tone for my skin, so I'm happy with that decision. I, I, I feel like if I were to get an eyeshadow shade, I definitely would not get that much use out of it because I just don't reach for my liquid shadows that much. So that's what I went with there. And then another thing we're going to try today, this is something that I was waiting to see if I got in PR, but I was planning on purchasing this if I didn't, but this actually just arrived a little while ago, so perfect timing for this video. This is the new Urban Decay Face Bond Foundation. I am so intrigued by this. So they say this is a waterproof foundation. It's supposed to be self-setting, which I feel like most of my foundations, if any, are not self-setting. So here it is. They sent the shade 5 Fair Neutral. Looks like it might potentially be a little bit too warm on me, but we'll, we'll make it work. But we're going to wear test this today as well, so I'm really excited to have this. Before we get into the try-on, I did want to remind you guys that my discount code with Magic Mind is still good for another few days. I shared about this in my last vlog, but I have been loving their productivity shots as a replacement for coffee. It breaks my heart, but I really can't drink very much coffee anymore because it just makes me so jittery. But I love the Magic Mind shots as an alternative because they give me sustained energy throughout the day without the jitters, without the energy crash. I've been really loving these if you wanted to try it out for 
yourself. The link and discount code are both down below. Thank you again to Magic Mind for sponsoring and supporting my channel. And I'm gonna drink this right now. <laughs> So refreshing. So let's try out this Urban Decay face bond. When I wear test foundations, I don't like to pair them with any sort of primer. The only other thing I have on my face right now is sunscreen and I'm wearing the Benton Airfit UV Defense Sun Cream. This is a good one because it's very neutral. It doesn't really add a whole lot of glow. It doesn't, it also doesn't really mattify or oil control. It's just a very neutral middle of the road sunscreen. So that is what I have on my face. And that's been on for like a few hours now. So the pamphlet that came with this foundation says for full coverage, they recommend using your fingers. For medium coverage, use your favorite brush. And for light coverage, use the sponge that came with it. So this did come with a sponge. Really cool shape. I kind of like the shape of this. So I think I don't usually like brushes for foundation. So I think I'm just going to do my fingers on one side and we'll see how that does. And then the sponge on the other side so we can just compare. I'm gonna shake it. This has such a cool packaging. Apparently they're trying to patent this type of nozzle. Just gonna squeeze about like a pea-sized amount onto my hand. This is a standard sized foundation bottle. It comes with exactly one ounce, which is typical, but I love how compact it is. It's very small. I feel like they really, you know, used as little packaging as possible, which I really appreciate. On this side of my face, I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it with my fingers. Mmm. Okay. Okay. So, okay, it's looking just a little bit dry on this side. Um, maybe, maybe the sponge will work better. It's just, definitely does have a matte finish. All right, I'm going to dot this on this side of my face. And let's try the sponge. I'm definitely liking the sponge side better. This side in this spot right here is looking very dry and I'm not having a particularly dry skin day today. I'm just tapping over the finger side now just to try and make it look a little better. I do think the shade definitely works. It's a little bit warmer than I would go. I would definitely not call this a neutral shade. This is the shade five fair neutral. It's very yellow. I definitely see what they mean about it being self-setting because it really did, it feels like it set pretty quickly. Like I don't feel like my face needs powder right now. Perhaps the thing I'm most excited about is the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer. Again, I got the shade N2 in this. I've also, guys, I literally forgot to do my brow glue before foundation. So I'm going to try to do this very carefully now. I'm just going to I'm going to use like less than I usually do because I don't want it to mess up my base. All right, so for this concealer, I've heard that a little goes a long way. So I'm just going to do like a little dot here for starters. And I'm going to blend that out with my this is my um, BK Beauty A506. This is my favorite concealer brush. I feel like this is a little yellow too. It's funny because it doesn't look yellow. It looks very neutral in the bottle, but it's kind of, I feel like it's blending out looking kind of yellowy. Maybe that's just the way it's looking next to the Urban Decay foundation. I'm not sure, but either way, I think the depth of the shade is good and that is really the most important thing. And I guess a little bit of yellow in the undertone can't hurt as far as correcting dark circles. Okay, that looks pretty nice. It blended out very smoothly. I would say I'm getting high medium coverage from this. I wouldn't say I got full coverage, at least not with the amount that I used. All right, let's try out this Glossier Liquid Bronzer in Sale. Let's see, what's the best way to do this? I'm just going to put some on my hand here to start out. So that's what that looks like. And from there, I'm just going to dot it onto my face, just where I would normally bronze. Put a little on my nose. All right, and I'm going to blend that out with the BK Beauty 101. Not sure how fast this sets, so I'm going to try to go quickly. It doesn't seem to be setting too quickly. Ooh, that is a pretty undertone. I like that. Okay, definitely my kind of shade. I like that it's pretty light. I pretty much only like bronzers when they're super light. 
that blended out really easily. Wow. I usually am a little wary of liquid bronzers because I haven't had the best luck in the past. I feel like a lot of them are just kind of hard to blend or they just blend out patchy or they stick in one spot, but that was very user-friendly. So far we're doing pretty well except for the base. I'm not thrilled with my foundation right now. Especially the side I blended out with my fingers looks very just like kind of separated and dry on my cheek here. This The side I used the sponge with definitely looks better, but there is kind of a separated area right here. So, hmm, I'm going to keep playing with it for sure, but... All right, so now for the Say Do Blush. I really haven't tried much from Say. The only other thing I've tried was their lip oil, which I really liked, but unfortunately it made my throat tickle. So for this, I'm going to try, just, just for kicks, I'm going to try a dot on my cheek first. I don't know how pigmented this is, but uh, we'll try that and just see how well that blends out. Ooh, okay, wow, that's actually more pigmented than I expected. <laughs> Wow, I, why did I think this was going to be sheer? Okay, I don't know if you guys can see this, but in the spots where I put those dots, it is looking patchy. So that's not a surprise to me. Most liquid blushes I feel like apply best when you put them on your hand first. So I'm going to try that for this other cheek. So yeah, this actually is like pretty pigmented. For some reason, I thought this was going to be kind of sheer. I guess the way I think of Say is like a kind of clean girl makeup brand, <laughs> kind of like Glossier, where they have very like sheer products, but maybe I was wrong about that assumption. I do really like this shade though. This is really pretty warm, peachy, rosy color. That is intense. We're looking very blushy. I used to like like a really heavy blush look. I still do sometimes, but that's a little heavier than what I typically wear these days. Um, okay. All right, back to my sponge. I'm just going to I'm going to tap around the edges here. So the side that I applied from the back of my hand, I feel like looks a lot more blended. I'm not seeing any, yeah, I'm not seeing any patchiness. This side is a little patchy, so definitely going to apply it to my hand first. That's also how I use the Rare Beauty blush. But actually, I wanted to mention the e.l.f. Camo liquid blush. This one I have dotted directly onto my cheeks, and it's blended out beautifully with no patchiness. So that's actually really impressive to me because most liquid blushes I can't do that with. All right, so because that Urban Decay foundation is supposed to be self-setting, I'm not going to use any powder on my face, but I am going to just lightly set my under eyes with that Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder. Baby Bake Loose Baking. Oh, I guess they call the mini one the Baby Bake. This is really interesting packaging. So let's see. Open. Oh, cool. It comes with a little puff. Um, I'm, I don't think I'm going to use that on my under eyes. So I think I'll do a powder puff on one eye and a brush on the other just so we can try both ways. So I've had that Natasha Denona concealer on for the past like 5-10 minutes and I'm getting just like a little bit of creasing under my eyes and like my deepest fine lines there which is pretty typical but really not getting as much creasing as I would get with a lot of concealers so so far I'm happy with that. Okay so the thing I'm realizing with this powder is that there's no lid because because the lid has that powder puff attached there's nowhere for me to dump this into. So I'm just going to use my e.l.f. setting powder lid to do this. I'm going to wipe it out so there's no cross-contamination. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there. All right, so let's try the powder puff on this eye. And I'll use a brush on the other eye. This is the BK Beauty 108. Ooh, okay, I'm noticing this actually does have a scent to it. Kind of a floral scent. Um, it's not, it's not too crazy or anything, but it is there for sure. Okay, well, so far I'm really happy with that. I feel like it was very smoothing to my under eyes, which is kind of what I look for in a loose powder, something that's going to really smooth and perfect the area. And I do feel like that's looking really nice without looking powdery and dry. So, so far, so far so good with that. So now for the Danessa Myricks Color Fix in Nude 4. This is going to be my eyeshadow. We're going to just try a one and done eyeshadow today. Oh wow, there's like a clear liquid that's coming out. I don't know if it got separated or let me try shaking it real quick. Okay, so there was a little bit of like a clear liquid that came out first, but it looks like now the pigment is coming. So 
but I'm just whoa, it's coming out separated. What is what is the deal here? Come on. It's like coming out really separated. All right, I think we got past the separation. And I mean, I'm gonna just try applying this with my fingers to my lid first and just tap it on. Okay, and then let me grab my favorite brush for cream eyeshadow. This is the Eco Tools Defined Crease. I'm just gonna use this. I'm gonna kind of tap over that and blend through the crease. Okay, yeah, really nice light beige. This does look like a pretty shade for bronzer too. I'll have to try that another day. Okay, so honestly the shade is a little lighter than I expected it to be, but I like the just very soft wash of like this nude color to my lids. It does seem pretty opaque um, despite being pretty light. I may have applied a little too much because I do feel like it's looking just a tad, I don't know, maybe cakey. Let me just tap over that with my finger. Okay, wait. Mm. I feel like maybe I applied a little too much or maybe the brush wasn't the best way to blend it out because I do feel like it's looking just a little bit kind of dry and cakey like towards the inner part of my eyelid. But I feel like that's probably only detectable from a very close distance. Okay, like here it is up super close. I don't know, I feel like it just looks a little dry. But I'll have to play around with my application technique with that. I think the last thing from my haul to test is the airbrush setting spray from Charlotte Tilbury. And the way I normally like to do this is I just apply it to one half of my face to see if it makes a difference. So I'm going to try applying it to this side of my face, the side that's where the foundation is not looking as good. We'll see if maybe this helps like meld the foundation into my skin better. So I'm just going to cover up this half or shake it. I don't know if you're supposed to, but... Okay, hold six to eight inches away and mist over entire face before and after applying makeup. Okay, well, I didn't do it before, but we're gonna... Okay, my memory card was full and the camera cut off, and I don't know exactly where it cut off, but I kind of drenched the sap of my face in setting spray. I'm gonna kind of fan it so it dries. Yeah, I feel like I got a lot, like, on my forehead, but that's okay. This does have a scent to it, again, kind of like a soft floral scent. Nothing too crazy, but it did kind of give my face that tight feeling that a lot of long wear setting sprays do. Okay, so I did a quick Google search and it looks like phenethyl alcohol, which is the last ingredient in this, is a fatty alcohol, which is usually better for your skin than something like denatured alcohol. Those tend to be more drying. And this actually says phenethyl alcohol is a volatile substance with a rose-like odor, widely used in foods, fragrances, and cosmetics. It's an antimicrobial antiseptic and disinfectant. Uh, so it's used to preserve cosmetics and also give them a little bit of a scent. So I'm guessing that's where some of that fragrance is coming from. Interesting. Yeah, this also does have just parfum as an ingredient, camellia leaf extract. But it's funny, it still did give me that kind of tight feeling that a lot of setting sprays do, even though it doesn't have denatured alcohol. I do feel like it gave this half of my face a little bit of a glow that wasn't there before. Like you can especially see it up here on my forehead. There's that versus the side without. Ooh, and I actually do think the area that was looking really dry looks a lot better now. I feel like this area is looking a lot less scaly and dry. So I'm gonna finish up with some mascara. Really been enjoying this Ilia Limitless Lash. All right, then to complete this look, I'm gonna do a combo of the Jones Road Lip Pencil in Mauve and the Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Gloss in Cherry Vanilla. There's the full face. I am going to come back at the end of the night for a wear update, but I like the overall look that I got. I don't know yet what to think of this Urban Decay face bond. I had really high hopes for this because I've loved Urban Decay foundations in the past. Their Hydromaniac was a favorite. I also loved their Naked Skin foundation, which they've discontinued, and I was kind of hoping this might be similar to that one. Um, Time will tell. Time will tell. I did not like the way it applied with my fingers at all, so I won't be applying it that way again. I think I'll stick to applying it with a sponge, which is typically my favorite way to apply foundations. And I definitely would agree with the claim that it is self-setting because it really did set down to a kind of powdery matte finish on its own within just about a minute or so. And that appeals to me a lot because I think, especially in the summertime, it's just nice to have fewer layers on my skin. So if I can skip powder, I, I really appreciate that. I do feel like now that it's had a chance to sit on my skin for a little while, 
it's looking better. Like it's not looking as dry, especially where I put the setting spray. But even on this side, I had like a slightly separated area right here. I feel like that is looking pretty good. Let me, I like to give you guys a really close up look, but this is what the foundation looks like right now on the non-setting spray side. This area right here where I have some enlarged pores is where I was noticing just like a little bit of separation. I don't know how obvious it is right now. I feel like it's looking less obvious now than it was before. So it is 2.30 right now. I've had the foundation on since probably about 1.30. So I'm gonna try to stay up till at least 11 tonight, if not midnight, to give you like a good long wear test. But I think that is all for now. So I will see you at the end of the night. Okay, so it is just after 11 p.m. And this is what the makeup is looking like now. I have to say, right off the bat, really not impressed with this foundation, the Urban Decay Face Bond. I am so disappointed. I was so excited for this foundation and it just does not look good. It is really broken apart around my mouth, chin. This whole area just does not look good. Let me give you a close up. Definitely got just a little bit shiny in my T-zone as well, a little oily. So it definitely didn't control the oil. I don't, I'm not even a super oily person, but um, I look kind of oily right now, honestly. But I actually think that this side with the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray does look a little bit better than the side without. I feel like it just looks a little bit less dry. Um, still doesn't look great, but it does look better. And it, it's funny because this is the side of my face that started out looking worse. This side now looks more dry, the side that I applied with a sponge and didn't use setting spray. So take from that what you will. Definitely gonna test this foundation in combination with different sunscreens. I'll see if I can find a way that I like to wear it, but as of right now, I'm really disappointed. Ugh. I was so excited for this and I love the packaging too, but I mean, obviously that doesn't matter that much uh, if the product itself is not good, but that was a little bit disappointing. Let's take a look at everything else. I do think that my under eyes are looking pretty nice with these two products. Uh, a lot of times by the end of the day, my under eyes will start to look kind of dry and just like extra creepy, but right now I feel like they're still looking pretty fresh. I'm not seeing much creasing at all with this, uh, with the concealer. I do feel like, I don't know, I feel like I would have wanted a little bit more coverage out of the concealer and maybe I just need to use a little bit more of it to get that. But as far as the finish and like the way it's sitting on my skin, I do think it looks really pretty. Um, so, so far so good with that. The two liquid cheek products I feel like held up really well, especially considering I didn't set them. Um, the Cloud Paint Bronzer, I, I mean, I, I feel like I can still see it. Like I still see quite a bit of bronziness on my forehead, my cheeks, my nose where I applied it, like it held up. And we did go for like an hour walk today. So, you know, I gave it a pretty good wear test. And the Say Blush, I I mean, I'm still looking very blushy in my opinion. So that seemed to hold up really well for me also. And then that Danessa Myricks color fix on the eyes. Um, I feel like it didn't fade. I mean, I did pair it with the Milani eyeshadow primer. I guess I maybe should have tried it one eye with, one eye without. But um, I wasn't sure if this was necessarily meant to be budge proof or crease proof, but I will try it without eyeshadow primer um, just to see what what happens. But I do feel like the color stayed in place pretty well. Um, I guess I'm seeing just like a tiny bit of fading actually in the crease of this eye now that I look more closely. And I just feel like it looks a little dry on my eyes. Next time I'm going to try to use less of it because I think I might have just used too much. I, I think that's that might be user error on my part. Um, so this, I don't know, to be determined on that. I definitely owe you guys like a giant speed reviews. I think I'm going to do it like tier list style with these products and also the products that I tried in my last sort of wear test get ready with me video. Lots of things I need to update you guys on after I've tested them in multiple ways. But for now, um, most of these things I enjoyed, but that foundation was a huge letdown. Who knows? Sometimes I change my mind about a product after I've tried it multiple times. This was only my first try. So who knows, you know, to be determined, but it's not looking good so far. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I'm going to wash my face and go to bed, but I hope you guys had fun. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. 
and subscribe if you haven't already. I do also have a Patreon and a channel membership if you're interested in supporting my channel further and also getting access to exclusive bonus content. I do an extra vlog and makeup video for my patrons and members every month. Otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I will talk to you very soon. Bye!